Broke through something. Wow. You got an open space 90 feet below grade? Right. There's a void down there. Wow. You've got to affirm whether or not it is a tunnel. And the only yep. way to learn that is to pull the core. Exactly. Time out. Get us some core. The Oak Island brothers have found what thousands of explorers could not make sense of. You see, Lot 5 and the Money Pit are related. This opens up a new realm of possibilities to discover all the secrets that have been missing for centuries. But are they ready to reveal the truth without this connection backfiring on their wildest discoveries? Let us explore how this massive link could change everything they thought they knew about Lot 5 and the Money Pit. Tracing the Templar's celestial codes over 2,000 miles northeast in Reykjavik, Iceland, Rick comments on the nice weather, saying, what a beautiful day, and Alex casually agrees with it, yeah. They are there to delve into ancient knowledge once brought back from the holy lands by groups like the Templars, whose importance often gets exaggerated. Two weeks before this, a person named Emiliano and an archaeoastronomer named Professor Adriano Gaspani had shown Rick and his team around a very old monastery from the 12th century located in Morimondo, Italy. Built by the Cistercian monks, this structure was not just a place of religious worship but was constructed with a precise focus on the stars. The Cistercians, religious group from the Catholic Church, had a practice of aligning their churches with celestial bodies, believing that such alignments were of great importance. The belief that these alignments could reveal more than just spiritual devotion is something that catches the attention of many who are enthusiastic about history and treasure hunting. It seems almost as if the monks were trying to capture something from the heavens in their architecture, which sparks a lot of speculation today. On the tour, Doug points out specific carvings found on Oak Island, a cross with four dots and a separate symbol of a circle with a dot in the middle. These carvings might have been mere decorations or perhaps important symbols loaded with meaning, depending on who looks at them. These markings have stirred a lot of discussion and guesswork about their true importance. As they continue to explore and try to interpret these ancient symbols and architectural cues, their journey becomes a sort of storytelling. The conversations between the past and the present are filled with attempts to understand what was really significant about these alignments and carvings. In both Reykjavik and Morimondo, as Rick and Alex discuss these topics, it's hard to tell where solid facts end and where creative interpretations begin. These discussions often transform into stories that mix a little bit of fact with a lot of imagination, turning historical investigations into tales that might be more exciting than the actual history. This blend of fact and fiction makes it tough for anyone listening to differentiate between what truly happened and what is merely a speculative spin on the past. In their quest for understanding, they perhaps add more color to the stories of the Templars and the Cistercian monks than history would strictly support. As they wander through these old sites, every detail examined could seem like a clue to something bigger, turning their study into a narrative that seems as much about entertaining as uncovering the truth. As the team explored Oak Island, they stumbled upon numerous symbols linked to the Templars, scattered throughout the area for many years. Professor Gaspany introduced a theory that perhaps these Templars used knowledge from European abbeys to create large stone structures on the island, including a formation known as Nolan's Cross. He suggested that this knowledge didn't just stay on Oak Island, it also traveled to Iceland. From the 11th to the 14th centuries, Iceland was bustling with over 15 monastic houses, which were essentially manuscript-producing hubs. Professor Gaspany pointed out a particular manuscript, written in parts in Latin and Norse and dating from around 1190 to the early 14th century, as evidence of this advanced learning. This document, he argued, shows how complex ideas like astronomy and sacred geometry were not just documented but actively developed in these remote regions. Rick, interested in the details, asked about the languages in the manuscript. Emiliano, a researcher with the team, confirmed they were Latin and Norse. He was quick to add that the manuscript was especially valuable because it contained specific details about astronomy, including names of stars. Next, we explore how the stars might unlock the island's secrets. The quest for Templar Trails Professor Gaspany research indicated that one star, Arcturus from the constellation Boötes, was crucial in laying out Nolan's cross on Oak Island. 
Emiliano believed this manuscript could link Arcturus directly to the history of Oak Island. Yet, this story raises eyebrows among the more skeptical. The idea of linking distant geographical locations, ancient astronomical knowledge, and precise stone placements into a meaningful pattern demands a high level of acceptance. It leans heavily on the interpretation of data that could be seen as reaching or overly convenient. Critics would argue that while the historical appeal of these theories is strong, the backing evidence leans heavily on interpretation. The idea that a medieval manuscript might unlock the history of a centuries-old site is captivating but ventures into the territory of creative storytelling. The connections drawn are sometimes seen as too convenient or speculative, and while the allure of tying together Templar knights, Icelandic monks, and star alignments is strong, it remains a complex web of possibilities rather than confirmed facts. Despite these concerns, the team presses on, digging both in the ground and through historical records, hoping to connect the dots that will clarify the past. The notion that their findings could significantly rewrite history fuels their ongoing quest, even as they tread the fine line between groundbreaking discoveries and imaginative speculation. They remain driven by the possibility that their efforts might one day clearly explain the historical significance of Oak Island, linking it unmistakably to broader global narratives. This text emphasizes the importance of understanding stars for navigation, especially Arcturus, which they called the Day Star because of its brightness. It seems that navigators may have chosen Arcturus as a guide, perhaps because it was one of the brighter, more visible options available. It's interesting because the text suggests that knowing about stars like Arcturus was particularly useful for sailing in northern areas. This might have been practical, but it also raises questions about how effective this star actually was as a navigational aid across different sea journeys or regions. The book we're looking at is full of references to how stars align, which is fascinating because it might connect to Oak Island. There's a temptation to think that as we dig deeper, we'll find more useful and compelling information. Yet, we should consider how much of this information can actually be proven and how much might just be appealing guesses, drawing us in with the promise of discovering something big that remains just out of reach. As we explore these ancient navigational stars and their alignments, it's crucial to critically assess their accuracy and usefulness over time and with modern technology. The idea that they might be linked to Oak Island is interesting but deserves a careful look. Following historical clues is one thing, but figuring out if they truly matter and are beneficial is another challenge. We need to keep in mind that these might just be elaborate stories passed down to intrigue and attract those who are curious or hopeful about finding something more than just old stories. This cautious approach is necessary because while the lure of potentially significant discoveries is strong, the foundation of these stories often rests on thin evidence. The connections we hope to find can lead us on extensive searches that may or may not yield the results we expect. Therefore, maintaining a skeptical perspective helps us stay grounded as we investigate these claims, ensuring that our enthusiasm doesn't cloud our judgment as we pursue what could either be a genuine find or merely an enticing legend. Sitting here with this book, I can't help but notice something quite intriguing. Look at this ribbon-like design on our copper piece, it's also right next to an image of a cross in the book. And this isn't an isolated instance, it appears repeatedly throughout the pages. With new clues, we dive deeper into Oak Island's mysteries. The artifact's dark tale in 2022, Gary Drayton and Jack Begley found a copper piece decorated with complex and striking symbols. Its elaborate design highlighted its historical importance. This wasn't just any discovery, it was a signal to pay more attention to what might have been overlooked or underestimated in historical artifacts. The object brought to light a pattern of designs that were possibly not fully appreciated before. This discovery made us rethink our views on what we used to see as mere decorative elements on metal. These designs now capture our attention, not only for their beauty but also for the historical connections they suggest. These connections go beyond simple aesthetics and help reshape our understanding of history, encouraging a deeper look into how we study artifacts and urging us to reconsider our historical narratives. When Dr. Edwin Barnhart reviewed a medals report by Emma Culligan, he speculated that the item could be ancient,
possibly from the Viking era, though he had little evidence to support this idea. It might be an ancient artifact, perhaps from the Vikings, Edwin said, his tone reflecting the uncertainty of his evidence. Doug Crowell, also involved in the discussion, expressed his uncertainty. We really can't be sure about the origins of this copper item, especially since it was found near Nolan's cross. We're quite unsure, he noted, suggesting that the item was part of a larger mystery. Is it possible that Doug Crowell's recent find and a 12th century manuscript hint at a Viking connection to the copper artifact from Lot 8? However, the notion of linking Vikings to such significant historical narratives tends to lean more towards creating an exciting story than being based on solid archaeological evidence. The idea of connecting different cultures and eras is captivating and promises new insights into our intertwined histories. But these connections are often a blend of educated guesses and the dramatic flair common in speculative theories without strong evidence. This mix of scholarly language and compelling storytelling indicates that while the artifact is genuine, the larger story built around it aims as much to engage audiences as to establish historical truths. The facts lie in the actual artifact found, but the surrounding stories. Venture into a realm of fascinating possibilities, where the line between fact and entertainment often blurs. Now, let's examine the thin line between history and legend. Navigating the murky waters of Oak Island's history trying to make these connections, the scholars and narrators tread a path filled with both potential discoveries and potential missteps. The academic community remains split, some are drawn to the tantalizing possibility of rewriting parts of history, while others call for more restraint and demand more concrete evidence before drawing such bold conclusions. This ongoing dialogue between possibility and skepticism shapes the investigation, as each new piece of evidence is scrutinized and debated within both scholarly circles and public forums. The result is a continuing exploration that engages the curious and the critical alike, each unfolding chapter of research adding layers to our understanding of the past, yet always leaving room for more questions and discussions. The idea that valuable treasures were hidden on Oak Island has captured the interest of both enthusiasts and skeptics. The recent finding of a symbol in both an old book and on a copper piece found on the island has sparked new discussions. Some people are convinced these connections are meaningful, but we should consider the possibility that we are seeing what we want to see, driven by the excitement of finding hidden riches. When we look at the supposed astronomical structures on the island, it's tempting to think they are part of some grand plan. However, finding similar symbols in different places doesn't always mean they are connected or serve the same purpose. While it's true that these symbols can stir the imagination and lead to more theories, it might just be a coincidence, cleverly used to keep the treasure hunt narrative going. The idea that there is a link between this old book and symbols on Oak Island sounds exciting. But jumping to conclusions without solid proof can lead to false connections. The island has been thoroughly searched by many groups, each adding their own theories and interpretations, which could just be unrelated bits of history. It's easy to see why those searching for treasure on the island feel a strong attachment to every small discovery. Each find is celebrated as a significant breakthrough, possibly leading to the next big find. However, the excitement often overshadows the need for careful examination and factual analysis. Certainly, this adds a fascinating layer to what some believe is a long and significant history. Those involved in this treasure hunt cherish these moments of discovery, thinking they are part of something historic. But for those who are more critical, the exploration is far from complete. We need to keep a level head and stay skeptical as we continue to investigate Oak Island's past. The real value might be in the stories created around the island, woven with both truth and fiction. Additionally, it's crucial to remember that every artifact and symbol discovered comes with its own set of questions. Who placed them there, and why? Are we reading too much into these finds because of the thrill of the hunt, or are there genuine historical connections to be made? These questions require careful thought and should not be brushed aside in the rush to link them to an overarching narrative. Moreover, the ongoing fascination with Oak Island teaches us about the human spirit's desire for adventure and the unknown. 
It shows us how stories can evolve and take on a life of their own, influenced by both facts and the imaginations of those who follow them. As new discoveries are made, it is vital to approach them with both excitement and a rigorous demand for proof, balancing the thrill of the hunt with the disciplines of science and history. As we uncover more, the true story of Oak Island unfolds. Oak Island's global links the end of the treasure hunt on Oak Island might come without finding any treasure, but the island has become a symbol of our desire to explore and discover new things. It shows how much we yearn to learn about our past and the efforts we are willing to make to fill the gaps in what we do not know. The story of Oak Island is not over, and perhaps the real treasure is its ability to capture our imagination and inspire stories of adventure and exploration. Oak Island has always sparked curiosity and excitement, attracting explorers and dreamers hoping to find something hidden. Whether they uncover physical treasures or not, they participate in a journey that tests the limits of their determination and creativity. This constant quest highlights our deep desire to connect with history and challenge ourselves against the unknown. The enduring appeal of Oak Island lies not only in the possibility of hidden riches but in its ability to keep us wondering and guessing about what might lie beneath its surface. This, in itself, is a valuable reminder of the tireless human spirit in the pursuit of knowledge and adventure. Rick Lagina and his team walk through the National Museum with a mix of anticipation and familiar routine. They meet Armin Goodmanson, in charge of numerous artifacts at the National Museum of Iceland, because the museum houses some Roman coins found in southern Iceland, similar to those discovered by the team on Oak Island. Recently, the team excavated ancient stone structures on Lot 5, acquired in 2022, and were surprised to find four Roman coins dating back 1,500 to 2,000 years. Armin explains that the coins are from the 4th century, while those found on Oak Island are from the 5th century. This finding suggests a crucial role of Nordic explorers, as there was no known European presence on Oak Island before the 15th century, except for the Nordics. The TV show, The Curse of Oak Island, explores Oak Island and has revealed interesting details about the island's history and its connections to other parts of the world. The show highlights the discovery of old coins from Rome and Carthage, which suggests that people from far away might have visited North America long before it was commonly believed. These coins are crucial clues. Finding Roman and Carthaginian coins on Oak Island suggests that Mediterranean sailors might have reached North America centuries before other known explorers. This idea is also supported by unique underwater formations near the island, which are more similar to ancient European structures than to anything built by the local Mi'kmaq people of Nova Scotia. Addition to coins, other artifacts like pieces of old pottery have been found, indicating that people were on Oak Island long before it became famous. Some of this pottery dates back to the 1600s, suggesting earlier settlements. These finds help us understand the long history of human activity on the island. Researchers studying the coins and other artifacts use modern science to learn more about where these items came from and how old they are. For example, they analyze the metals in the coins to figure out where the metals were mined. This helps historians map out old trade routes and see how different parts of the world were connected. The ongoing research and discoveries on Oak Island continue to add to our knowledge of the past. They show us that the world might have been more connected in ancient times than we thought. As the team uncovers more artifacts, each one adds a new piece to the puzzle, giving us a clearer picture of the past and how different cultures might have interacted. What do you think, could ancient Mediterranean civilizations have truly reached North America? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing updates.